Hey everybody, it's your old pal Chuck, and I am back with another review. And today we're taking a look at from Transformers Legacy Evolution Wave 2. This is Autobot Twincast. And yes, this is Autobot Twincast, the Voyager that was like just revealed a week ago. Um basically what happened is a day before um Hasbro made the official reveals, Big Bad Toy Store put this and Metal Hawk up for pre-order, and sure enough, um, even though they very quickly pulled the orders, they honored the pre-orders that they had, and within a few days, we got notification that, yes, they were uh, coming in stock, and they shipped out. So, this is really cool to have, and I'm very fortunate to uh, have it. Um, Twincast, if you're not aware, is a repaint of Kingdom Wave 4, Legacy Wave 1, Voyager uh, Blaster. So this is basically a figure that's about a line, line and a half old, which put it about a year, year and a half old. Um, you know, it was a little bit of a pain to have to go looking for Blaster since I got it so early on, but it's nice to have. And for those of you unfamiliar with the character Twincast, Twincast is Blaster rebuilt, powered up, um, after he and Soundwave have a battle to the death that ends in both their mutual destructions. That happened in the Japanese exclusive Headmasters cartoon, and back in the day, in G1, neither Sound Blaster, which was Soundwave's power-up form, or Twincast were released in the United States. I want to say this might be the first time we're getting a mass retail twin cast figure, maybe the second, but certainly um, in terms of the boombox style alt mode, this is the first time. Um, very nice looking figure. Now, unfortunately, a um, few things to note is like on the original twin cast, the tape deck was remolded to hold two tapes. Um, that is not present, which I'm a little disappointed about, because when they did Sound Blaster from the Siege Mold, they went and remolded that chest. So, there's that. But I do like the color scheme. This, uh, Deco is meant to homage and is closer to the original Diaclone microchange, uh, version of the pre-Blaster toy that was an actual working AM FM radio. And uh, weapon storage is here on the back, like on Blaster. But the Evo Fusion, they show it as putting the weapon in like that. I don't know. It's just, we'll just keep that off to the side since, you know, transformation. Um, tape deck does open. And inside, we have a repaint of sorts of Blaster's cassette buddy, uh, Eject, as Rewind. Much like Eject, Rewind is done in clear plastic, and it's this smoky brown, which really isn't accurate to the character, but apparently because the figures are gang-molded to the tape deck door, that's what it is. Now, I do, now, unfortunately, on the original toy, the tape deck was red. They did, and the reason it was like that was to, to code... Um, special uh, images that came on the cassettes that were available for Twincast and Sound Blaster that showed the weak points for uh, Scorponok in Twincast case and Fortress Maximus in Sound Blaster's case. I want to say that this looks like it's brown, clear plastic that's been sort of painted over red. It, it, just, it just doesn't pop like it should. So... Yep, that's about it for Boombox mode. Now, since we have covered the transformation with Blaster, um, and I will have a link to the video, we will just, what will be a few seconds for you will be a few minutes for me, but we'll pause and just go to the robot mode comparisons. Before we get into the robot mode comparisons, I would be remiss if I didn't show uh, Rewind and Eject together. As I said, they are just... Uh, I can't even say repaints, but they're molded in different colored uh, clear plastic. 
And that's one of the reasons why, as you see, I haven't transformed Eject because I really don't want to fiddle with the clear plastic all that much. But it is exactly the same, same transformation, uh, same layout. Um, let me just make sure if the heads are the same, actually. Mm. Mm. Oh. I do believe, yes, the, the heads are the same, just, you know, different colors. But it is nice. Unfortunately, as I said, they don't, we don't have that dual cassette chest. So you can't combine and have them together. And, you know, to be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of these versions of Eject and Rewind. And I do hope in the Studio Series 86 line, we get proper redos like we've gotten for uh, Rumble, and we'll see it repainted as Frenzy. So there's that. Now, on with the robot mode comparisons between TwinCast and Blast. Okay, and as you can see, here's the two of them side by side. Um, interesting thing to note, two things I want to mention. Number one, as of this recording, the QR code on the box to get to TwinCast Bio is not live yet. I believe that that's just how early these figures are. And number two, I noticed that the box for Kingdom Blaster is a little bit bigger than the Legacy Evolution box. And thus, um, Blaster takes up a lot less space, which I think is something I mentioned, that the box was just way too big. So I do appreciate um, that they made the Legacy Evolution box a little smaller, so TwinCast can take up more of the space. But the Kingdom box does feel a little more substantial than the Legacy Evolution boxes. Um, besides the colors, um, the big difference is going to be that TwinCast has a new face. The heads are the same, but the faces are different. Now, um, you might remember hearing that there was a run, I believe, of the Shattered Glass Blasters that came with this slightly smiling, smirking face, whereas it was supposed to have this more stoic face that Blaster has. I might be wrong about that. It might have been later runs of Blaster had this the difference in this face. But really, that's about all. So I'm giving you guys the shot there. Other than that, um, any other little differences I feel are quality control. Um, for example, I find that TwinCast can open its cassette door using its robot finger a lot easier than, say, Blaster could. Um, I think it just the spring is a little bit stronger in that regard. Um, you know, uh, I, I find that maybe the legs don't peg into the forearms as well. And also, I think I find that TwinCast, the legs tend to bow a little forward. You really don't notice it unless you're looking straight down in cassette mode. But again, those are QC issues. Um, nothing substantially different for the mold as you can see here again um, different layout the different color layouts but it's all the same ports same uh, pieces and all that both of these are great molds I actually passed on shattered glass blaster because frankly I knew twin cast was coming and I just didn't feel I needed to own more than two versions of the mold and really um, Unless you're like a die-hard Japanese fan, Twin Cast may not be a necessity. And uh, you might be getting ahead there in my final thoughts, but there's a side view. Side view, same blaster too, you know. So, but really, I mean, that's what Twin Cast was. Twin Cast was just basically blaster in different colors with that additional uh, tape deck. So, I think we can pause. And we will come back with my final thoughts. Okay, so here's our final look at TwinCast with Rewind. And like I said, unless you're a really big fan of the Japanese mythology, um, 
Twin Cast might really be a hard pass for you. I mean, as far as I know, I think Blaster can still be found relatively easy, and we have that long history with the character from the G1 cartoon and comics. I mean, again, I don't even think Twin Cast was introduced in the comics. And when you're dealing with the fact that um, you know, rewind is just a re replasticing of eject in this darker colors. Um, I really don't know uh, what to say because, much like eject, it's not a question of if but when rewind will break down with use. Twin cast is fine, I mean, it's a good figure, it's a solid figure, and if you never liked blasters colors but you like these. It's worth the purchase. Now, I said I got this from Big Bad Toy Store. I do not know if they have any in stock right now. It might have been an early shipment. With that said, other online retailers, such as Amazon.com, have it available for pre-order, but it, its release date is sometime in April or May. Now, again, starting off 2023, we know that Hasbro has been doing these more uh, conservative release dates only to have the figures come months in advance, which might be an issue. So if you do choose to pre-order the figures, this figure from, say, Amazon or Hasbro Pulse, just be aware that while it says April or May, um, you might be seeing it as early as next month. I mean, there are some retailers that have Skyquake already, apparently, which is interesting. So, just be aware. Um, also, since this is a Wave 2 figure and a repaint, there's a good chance that if you wait a while, you might be able to pick up Twin Cast on sale further down the line, because it's been sitting on a shelf in a store. So there's something to think about, too. But that's about it for the review. If you like this review, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. While we always appreciate the views, your likes, comments, and subscriptions help to communicate to YouTube through their algorithms that my channel should be exalted and held upon high. If you want to make the ultimate sign of support, I do have a Patreon. It is www.patreon.com slash chuckdog1999. All I ask for is a dollar a month, $12 a year. No thrills, no tears, no special rewards. All you're doing is helping me help you to help me help you make bring figures like this to you <laughs> as I knock off uh, Rewind, as well as keeping up the infrastructure of the channel. Um, as I always mention, though, I understand times are tough now, and that while there's a little bit of inflation, you may not be able to swing a dollar a month, $12 a year. That's fine. Your views are always thanks enough. Patreon is just a cherry on top of an already generous Sunday. So that's about it for the review. Uh, once again, for TwinCast and Rewind, we will see you next time.